Hello, this is the Apex Clothing Tutorial with 3DS Max, and this one will be focusing on a trench coat character. So if we open up our start file, we can see we have our crash test dummy, and he's built up with uh, just your normal biped rig, and we've got a trench coat on him. And let's go ahead and put him in animation mode so we can see his skin deformation prior to putting any clothing on him. And we're going to reset our animation and let's go ahead and put the character back into figure mode. So let's go ahead and select the trench coat and let's put our character in isolation mode and, and focus on this one aspect of the character. Now if we go and look at the geometry in wireframe overlay mode we've got nice uniform geometry this helps for many of the obvious reasons. Um, in modeling as well as deformation and and of course being able to predict how you want the mesh to bend. So now let's go ahead and select our trench coat and up at the main menu bar we'll go physics, apex clothing and create clothing. This gives us our clothing modifier. So under the general attributes tab let's go ahead and turn off the visualizer for the physics mesh. Now let's go ahead and paint some max distance. If you can see here we've, we've got our default value which we really don't want on the sleeves and the collar so let's go ahead and flood a value of zero over the entire asset. And we're going to start at the bottom of the trench coat and work our way up to the midsection and we're going to start with a value of about 100 centimeters and this should give the base of the trench coat plenty of, of freedom to move around the, the feet and the legs um, as the character moves through its environment. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and paint this bottom row here and you see we got the, the red visualizer that uh, tells us what the max distance is and then I've gone and hit the auto fit button under visible range and what this has done is made our value range a uh, uh, black and white grayscale. So now we can turn off our visualize for the max distance and we can rely purely on the color. And if we ever need to go back and turn that visualizer on, um, say we change the high end of the value from 100 centimeters to 120, or maybe you shorten it in some circumstances, you can always go back and turn that stuff on and off. So we're just going to take the uh, lower portion of the trench coat and pretty much go at 100 centimeters all the way up to just above the knees, um, right about where the back of the trench coat comes together. And then from there, we're going to start blocking in some slightly lower values. Um, we'll start with 75 centimeters and then 50 centimeters. I'm just going to move down to 75 and get the next three or four spans. And what we're going to do is basically we're, we're blocking out um, some some chunks of topology and we're going to go back in and use the smooth brush and smooth that all out so that we don't got to sit there and paint each each loop by hand. So now we're going to change our value to 50. And so we, we want to go right up to where these these edges start coming together. The 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 loop just below that is going to be our, our top simulated row. And we want that row to be painted at about maybe 0.5 or 1 centimeter. Then once we get all that done, we can go in with our smooth brush and smooth everything out. Now what we want to do is apply our latch to nearest feature, 
which is going to take the vertices on the interior of the trench coat and project them to the nearest triangle on the exterior of the trench coat and simulate alongside of them. This is going to save us uh, a good deal of computation so that we don't have to simulate both the interior and exterior of the trench coat. And if we get into our face edge view here and we turn back face calling off, um, you can see here we want our edges to be facing the same direction on the interior as the exterior. This is going to prevent any crossing of edges during the simulation. So now we want to take our trench coat and change the channel value from max distance to latch to nearest. And 0 equals black and 1 equals white. Which is pretty typical of most other packages. So now we just want to get in here to the interior of the coat and with ignore back facing turned on we're going to go ahead and paint up the inside of the trench coat. So what we want to do is paint up to the row where the edges start converging just as we can see here this is going to ensure that we get all of the vertices that were painted with max distance on the other side so they've got somewhere to attach to. And if there's no max distance on the vertices that latch to nearest is turned on, then they don't participate in the simulation. And you want to get in here to the edges of the trench coat and make sure you didn't get both of them on the edge. This would cause some strange behavior since they'd be um, confused about which triangles to attach to. Now we need to create a ragdoll so that the cloth has something to collide with. In this situation where there's a lot of movement down there uh, at the base of the character, um, wide leg motions and such, uh, backstop really isn't sufficient, so we want to use actual collision shapes. Select the trench coat and then go over to the physics toolbar or the main menu and create a kinematic ragdoll. Next, go ahead and move the ragdoll helper above the character where it's somewhere convenient to select later on. And with it selected, go to the general attributes rollout. And you can see there's a big white edit box and at the bottom there's an add button. If you click that, then it'll bring up a select bones dialog. And for this particular ragdoll, since it's only dealing with the lower half of the character, we want the pelvis, the lower spine bone, and we want the thigh and calf from both legs. So select those using control click and say OK. And as you can see it's gone and created the capsule shapes on the selected bones. Uh, so now what we want to do is go and adjust those capsule shapes so they closer fit and conform to the body of the character so that it's a better representation for the cloth to collide with. Uh, to make this a little bit easier, what I like to do is make my clothing mesh see-through and then take the, the body inside and also the trench coat and freeze them. That way I can't accidentally select them and I can just focus on working with the bones and the shapes. So select the pelvis and then go ahead and expand the modifier and if we go down to the mesh transform a subcomponent of that modifier, then we can use our rotate and translate gizmos to position the capsule shape better. And if you go over to the physical meshes rollout of the rigid body, you've also got your radius and height. So once this is positioned, go ahead and reselect the, the rigid body at the top level and collapse the modifier. Then we can move up to the lower spine bone and go through the same process and just adjust it so that it fits better. In this case I want to go ahead and rotate it up 90 degrees and then position it back down beneath the spine and this is a better fit for this particular character. Once we're done with the spine let's go ahead and move on to the legs of the character. Go ahead and pause the video and when you have both legs finished the thigh and calf on the left leg and the thigh and calf on the right leg unpause the video and we'll move forward. This should only take a few minutes. And here we can see our completed ragdoll with both legs and the lower portion of the spine and pelvis. So now what we want to do is go ahead and select any biped bone, go over to your motion panel and take the character out of figure mode and let's see what the simulation looks like. Go ahead and turn my grid back on and play simulation. 
So you can see here we got some pretty good cloth uh, deformation going on here right out of the box. But you can see the back of the foot is coming through the trench coat. Um, this is because our lower capsule, or at least in, in this case, um, didn't really extend far enough down. So what we want to do is put the character back in the figure mode and we're going to add some capsules to the two foot bones. So go back over to your general attributes tab on the ragdoll helper, which is just above the character, and select both feet. And it's given us some convex shapes and we want to turn those into capsules. So just select one foot and you'll have the rigid body modifier selected as well and change the mesh type to capsule. Go down to the sub object mode, mesh transform, and use your translate and rotate gizmos to get the capsule placed around the foot. And I usually angle them down the, the slope of the foot. And then what we want to do is go back and select our ragdoll helper and there's a little button called mirror rigid bodies and up at the top we've got a text field on the left and right. Uh, we've got our character names with underscore L and underscore right for left and right so we can select which rigid bodies we want to mirror across the character. Uh, this helps speed up ragdoll creation in that you only have to do half of the character. Um, keep this in mind while building your character and just name things appropriately. And now if we go back and play our simulation again, we can see that the foot is now properly pushing the cloth back so, and we're not getting any penetration. Now let's go and set the attributes for the trench coat. With the trench coat selected and the apex clothing modifier selected, let's change the density to 0.8 friction to point 0.1, bendiness down to point 0.1 as well. And since we don't want a very bouncy trench coat, let's change dampening to point 0.1. We'll keep stretchiness at zero since we don't want any stretchiness at all. And we'll put anti-stretch on 1.05. This is going to allow just a little bit of freedom in just in case the trench coat needs to stretch uh, to wrap itself around a collision shape to get a, a good simulation. We're going to set the thickness to 1.5 centimeters. Uh, so this is basically saying that any given simulated vertice uh, collides 1.5 centimeters away from the collision shape. We're also going to set the self-collision thickness to 1.5 centimeters. This is telling the cloth that when it folds back on itself, that it's going to collide at a range of 1.5 centimeters. And this looks pretty good, but let's do a little experiment and let's see what the trench coat looks like at a much lighter density. So let's select the trench coat and we'll go up to our density and we'll set it down to 0.1. If we go and we play the simulation, we can see that the trench coat is very floaty. Unfortunately, that's not what we're looking for in this case, so let's go ahead and keep it at 0.8. Now let's have a look at our final comparison. And we have our skinned deformation on the character on the left and the simulated clothing of close to a thousand vertices on the right.